Hello, everyone. This is Outnumbered. I'm Kaylee McEnany here with my co-host, Emily Campagno. Also joining us, Fox Business anchor and host of American Dream Home on Fox Business, Cheryl Cassoni. Journalism fellow for the Steamboat Institute, Kaylee McGee-White. And Fox News Control, I I think that this accomplished two goals. And we're only halfway through the day. He's still got to go meet with the Senate. But number one, he said to the service employees, I don't want taxes on tip about congressmen who who haven't always been supportive. People like Uh Mitch McConnell, a senator who hasn't spoken. My perception of this is it's the evolution. Well, I think that Paul makes an important point in that it really is an important opportunity for Republicans to exploit Democratic division because they put on a brave face here. But we all know that internally the party's in turmoil over the Gaza conflict right now. You think about the infighting that occurred just this week when Hillary Clinton endorsed the primary opponent of squad representative Jamal Bowman, and now Bernie Sanders is attacking her. They can't stop fighting amongst themselves. But that's only going to be temporary because we do know one thing about the Democrats, which is that they will vote blue no matter who. They will rally together before November. So this is an opportunity for Republicans if they can take advantage of it. And it's going to be especially critical heading into November because that's That's how you win over the on the fence voters. I think of my own home state of Michigan, the voters on the fence there, they want to talk about the issues. They want to talk about the economy. They want to talk about immigration. So if I'm a Republican, every time the Democrats start fighting about what's happening in Gaza, I'm reminding voters that Biden just led in eight potential terrorists across our southern border. Mm -hmm. If I'm a Republican, I'm reminding voters every time Democrats try to figure out what to do about Bidenomics, that voters are paying 30 percent more in groceries than they were before Biden took office. I'm hammering home those issues because that's what's going to matter at the end of the day. Absolutely. And he mentioned tariffs today. Judges have the ability, executive officials, to ask for their proceeding to be removed to federal court. And as put federal judge, you can move. If you're charged with anything at the state level, you can move and have it changed to a federal jurisdiction. That's pretty huge. So why can't the president, he argued, the former president, especially being charged with something? So essentially, if Nancy Pelosi can do it right now, why couldn't President Trump? As they were covering President Trump on the Hill, they were just showing footage of January 6th. Where he is right now that I should just report it on. So he's at the business roundtable, and there's about 200 members in that roundtable. And you all, he's also telling them, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to cut down regulations even more. He'll fight against uh, the green energy plans. A lot of companies have complained about that. That is a pretty potent pitch after three years of Bidenomics. Bidenomics, remember that term? All right, well, former President Trump is going. (laughs) What I loved about that so much, Paul, is that, as I said, it's just, it's two of them being themselves. It's watching two normal humans interact. There's no faking anything, right? They're they're authentic. And that's probably in part why Logan Paul's uh, transaction with your link to a credit card, it takes a 3% tax. Mm -hmm. That, you feel that if you're a a young person working in the gig economy. So, well, those kids vote these days. They're tuned in. They see this stuff on TikTok. That's why he's with Logan Paul here, who's got an enormous enormous following on TikTok. But kids get him. They, they understand that Trump is funny. They see Biden, they see their cranky grandpa. Let's be frank. Mm-hmm. That's true. Kaylee, I want to get your thoughts on what Paul did. The other issue, too, is if you look at the things, and, and actually, J- Jake Paul, his brother, I didn't, I, I don't know a lot about them either, but he said, he goes, look, he goes, mm-hmm. the guy who stands frozen during a White House concert for Juneteenth, that's what Biden did, or the guy going face to face that we've always known and appreciated and left. All right, guys, right now, President Biden is back on the world stage in Italy. Assets, like $325 billion in, in Russian assets have been frozen. So fair enough, they're figuring out a way to make the finances work, so I'll take it. But you know who those, those other European leaders are right now? So th- th- what's at stake is what is so disconcerting to me on, on a constant basis. And by the way, served in government, everyone knows that he's always been disorganized, though totally inexcusable and clearly sort of uh, furthered by his handlers, him at the commander-in-chief watch, and especially not those in service. And the family members have an additional worry and fear, and all of that is... Biden is here at the G7 conference, and yet he has become the single biggest liability to the G7 security and to our own national security. And what you were saying about service members earlier is important. My brother serves in the Navy, and I'll just say, many of his fellow service members are considering not re-signing because they do not want to serve under a president that they do not believe is mentally fit to command them. This is a big concern in the military, and it's widespread across all voters. I think of a new CBS poll out this week that found that just one 
third of voters in the U.S. believe that Biden has the mental capacity to serve another four years in office. Among my generation specifically, that concern is exacerbated. A New York Times poll found that 85 percent of Gen Zers do not think that Biden is mentally fit to serve. And if voters here at home, who are probably going to be much more charitable to their president, feel that way, imagine what our enemies on the world stage think about us. Mm -hmm. Mm. Such great points, guys. More outnumbered next. So it would not look good to the rest of the world, but let's do it, Paul. Let's do it. <laughs> so we're expected to believe that Fawny Willis had to hire that guy <laughs> to run a complex RICO. That's why she hired him, because yeah. of his legal acumen. Yeah, okay. All right. So look, that case went up on. Watch how complicated and uncomfortable. Now, <laughs> okay, I've been in this business 20 years. That is a very rare occurrence. Yes. For some, you know, how they were set up before, the, before he agreed to do it. At the same time, what I find so interesting is that he avoided it in my mind because I think he's worried about more legal repercussions against him and against Fonnie Willis. That's confusing. That's a change. Yes, it is. Um, I think she's clearly leaving the door open for America to accept, frankly. I just think that their real risk here is that he is a vulnerability if he were to be facing jail and flip. Mm. And I know that's people, members of the Biden family. Let's just put it this way. He's not on the same page with Jill. He's got issues with the uncle. I think the uncle is actually the one that's the most vulnerable, particularly in the area of the Chinese money. They can't afford to have him turn hostile. And that's why every major news station would not have been given to the Trump administration. You had to be perfectly clear on your answer. Say that your Justice Department has taken action, has held Hunter Biden accountable for crimes that conveniently are the only ones alleged that do not implicate Joe Biden. Biden himself. Mm -hmm. You are essentially able to sweep this under the rug moving forward. So I think that more is in store later down the road. Gosh, a lot of questions, questions that could be asked in a White House press briefing. If we ever get one, it's been a long time since we had one. <laughs> All right. Like a sorority alumni. <laughs> I can't even. Oh, is that going to work? I. So far, things are not working. Threatened by this administration, overregulated. People out there are hardworking. Like the, the reality is such a stark contrast to a bunch of lawmakers cheers. Their Democrats are plying everyone with free stuff and swag and this. But the reality is, is what Americans are feeling right now and what we... Watered down beer. It doesn't even look like good beer. It's not... I mean, I, I think of my home state of Michigan, though, as an example of... A perfect example of why so many Americans do not want electric vehicles. Right now, you have... Get out of my 72... Mach 1 with a Coyote Illuminator gas-guzzling engine. I will cheers every woman in that video. More outnumbered in a moment.